Howdy doody everyone, Wombu here, and today we got ourselves a spatloon. My sincerest apologies for that. Anyway, Splatoon. I gotta admit, when I first saw the concept of a shooter based on inking turf, I was a little skeptical on how well it could really be pulled off. Now that I have the game, though, and I've been playing it for quite some time, I can say happily, this game is really good, you guys. One of the big things that intrigued me about it right from the get-go was the possibilities and how levels in this game could be designed. Splatoon has gone through quite a lot of updates since its release, adding new clothes and weapons, but I've always personally been most excited by the new maps. There's been a lot added since the first release, and we're here to talk about all of them. Them. All 16 of them. Before we do, though, I gotta establish some rules. Number one, while a lot of the maps actually change based on which mode you're playing, for this list, I'm gonna be ranking the maps based on Turf War, because it's the mode that I play the most, and I really don't play ranked as much as I should. Number two, it should go without saying, but this is based on my opinion. Pretty much every map of the game has some merit and some problems, but this ultimately comes down to how much fun I have on these particular maps. And I'm ranking all of them, so you're bound to disagree with at least a few of my placings. With that kinda long intro out of the way, sit down, Squid because we've got a lot of maps to cover. Literally. So I may be able to tolerate every map in the game, but boy am I sick of this one. Okay, so I know a lot of people are probably gonna think I'm stupid for sticking Black Belly Skate Park in the bottom spot, and I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but please let me make my case. I can legitimately see why some people really love this stage. Hell, I used to like this stage. Conceptually, it's actually kinda cool. A skate park really does make a lot of sense for a game like Splatoon, but I'm sorry, this stage really wore off on me. Part of that is the amount of slopes and small ledges, which while it works given the skate park theme, it makes traversing the map pretty awkward. It's a little difficult to keep momentum when the terrain is so damn inconsistent. I mean, it's not impossible to maneuver by any means, but whenever I find myself having issues with the swimming mechanics, it's usually on this stage. Then there's also the central pillar, which scopes out almost all of the fucking map, so most fights just feel like a game of tower control, which to me at least gets kind of boring after a while. Plus there's also the railings, which can occasionally be obnoxious, as they're only really a presence when they're getting in the way. Honestly, these problems alone aren't so bad, but it's compounded by the fact that there really isn't much that I like about this map. It feels a little too small, I mean, it's the smallest map in the game, actually, and it doesn't really have a whole lot of different routes to take, so the map feels pretty pretty linear. Like I said before, I can tolerate every map in the game, but as of right now, Black Belly Skate Park is the only one I actively dread playing on whenever it shows up. I'm just not very fond of it. But that doesn't mean it's bad. See? We're cool here. Please don't kill me. I don't dislike this stage. Not at all, actually. In fact, Walleye Warehouse is pretty safe for the most part. Too safe. The whole stage is pretty flat, it's small, it's linear, and it doesn't really have any extra gimmicks of any kind. In that respect, Where I Wall House could just be seen as a nicely balanced map that's easy for anyone to jump into. That being said, it's just a little too empty for my taste. I like the maps that require the player to really take advantage of the swimming mechanic, and this just kind of feels like the bare minimum in that regard. Now I will cut it some slack, and say that when you have weirder stages like Anchovy Games and Mahi Mahi Resort, a more conventional map like Where Wall I House is quite a necessity. Also it's one of the oldest stages in the entire game, being one of the two two stages in the test fire. Still, number 15 is as high as I'm willing to put it, because although it kinda needed to be this way, it's probably the least interesting map in the game to me. This next map has been a weird one for me. I started off loving it, then I grew sick of it, and then I started to hate it, and then it grew on me once again, and now I just kinda feel mad about it. So Camp Trigger. Well, this is going great so far. What do you want, Kate Bug? You done got me triggered here, Wombu. You done got me triggered! Cause it's Camp Triggerfish. Shut your stupid weird lamp face this instant. Camp Triggerfish at number 14? Seriously? Should it be higher? Higher? Are you serious? No, it should be lower. This map is garbage. Why though? What, I gotta do your fucking job for you now? Well, you went through all the trouble of breaking in. Whatever. To those of you watching, Camp Triggerfish can go fuck itself. The whole layout of the map is awkward as hell. It's deceptive in that the two sides just barely exceed jumping distance of one another. Instead, if you want to get over to the enemy side, you have to use the grates, which, by the way, are used excessively throughout the entire level, even when there's no point in them. And with a setup like this matched with how uncomfortably open everything is, of course, longer range weapons are going to have a huge advantage. What else could I really add? This map is absolutely disgusting. Can you really disagree, Wombo? Eh, not really. 
Well, there we go then. Camp Triggerfish is the new number 16. No. Are you fucking kidding me right now? No. You're stupid. Okay, look, while I can concede to pretty much all of those points, I still think there are some positives about it. For one, I actually kind of like how disconnected the two sides feel. The layout kind of encourages players to try and sneak their way onto the other side, which I like. Plus, the gates coming down at the last minute is a nice touch too, as it can really alter the game for the final stretch. It's an interesting idea, and I think Camp Triggerfish pulls it off okay. You're stupid, and your OC is stupid. Your face is also stupid. Bottom line, you're stupid. Well, can you really prove me wrong here? No, I guess not. Then I guess we're at an impasse. I guess so. You want to leave my video now? Yeah, you're a lost cause anyway. <sighs> Piranha Pit is to this day the only stage that has ever given me a bad first impression. I hated it the first couple times I played it, but now I've had more time to mess around on it, and now I think it's... uh... It's decent. Starting with positives, the conveyor belts are conceptually pretty cool, and can make for very interesting strategies. Me, personally, I like to put sprinklers next to them. GET THE TURF RIGHT QUICK! Also, I'm a fan of really big maps. The fact that there's so much ground means you're going to want to be moving around a lot, which is cool. Still, I hesitate to call Piranha Pit a good stage, and I think most of that boils down to the layout, which I just find to be kind of a mess. The spawn points are pretty busy, but then everywhere else is just weirdly open, with the exception of the two ramps in the center. And I know I just praised the conveyor belts, but I kind of wish they interacted with the map in more interesting ways. Perhaps if there were even more unique portions of the stage that could only be accessed using the conveyor belts, they'd feel more like a necessity. As it stands now, Piranha Pit is alright, but I think it could be a lot stronger. <laughs> Aw, oh, yes. Good ol' arowana marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, but really, we're now starting to get into the maps that I can speak notably more positively about. Consider this the start of the high mat here, as it were. Arowana Mall is yet another long and narrow map, but unlike Where's Waldo Warehouse, there's actually stuff in it. You've got two open areas on each side of the stage, as well as some narrow side passages. All of these routes, however, lead to the hill on the center of the stage, which can admittedly be pretty obnoxious to get past, since it's small and usually crowded with players. That being said, I've always kind of liked the map's verticality. You've got the slopes that aren't a total pain to swim up, and the little sniper posts are also kind of a nice touch. I'm not a huge fan of the map's linearity, but at the end of the day, there's still enough here that I can find it pretty solid in spite of that. It's an alright map. <laughs> So I'm still not super sure how to feel about this one. I mean, I like it. I think. Okay, look, the layout of the stage is fine. I'm gonna cut right to the chase, though. Pretty much everything I have to say about Ancho V games boils down to the use of the fans, because they are easily what stands out the most. Now, if I'm being honest, I can't seem to shake the feeling that the fans are used kinda haphazardly. The two fans in the center, in particular, can make the stage feel pretty disorienting, with the space around you constantly moving up and down. That being said, I like that the fans are used to reach certain choke points or infiltrate the enemy's side of the stage. And while, yeah, that can be kind of a pain, I think it's effective in making the fans feel like a necessity, at least more than the conveyor belts from Piranha Pit. So to summarize, Ancho V Games provides a nice and unique way of traversing the map that can be a little bit of a pain at times, but ultimately gets a tentative thumbs up from me. Or it would if I had thumbs. And yet I'm only a little more sure how to feel about this one. I've never really been super fond of Bluefin Depot, but at the very least, I've always found it an interesting map to play on. Aside from another map that I'll be covering later down the line, it's one of the only stages with a huge emphasis on its levels. Each team starts off on the two highest points, before quickly dropping as they work their way towards the middle of the stage, which by the way is cut off by a body of water, meaning you actually have two platforms that make up the lower level. I imagine the upper levels on each side being kind of like a fortress, where each team is consistently trying to fend off and then invade the other. Kinda like every map in the game. Okay, I'll admit, this is sounding a little dumb, but I'm serious. I find myself switching between the defensive and offensive a lot on this one. The map isn't very big at all, so you'll likely be fighting your way through a lot of other inklings if you want to make it to the enemy side. There's a particular intensity to it that I find isn't really found on other maps. That being said, this map certainly isn't without its issues. As quite a few of my friends who hate this map have already pointed out, the way the levels change so abruptly makes it pretty unfriendly to melee weapons. Being a fan of rollers, this is actually a pretty big deal for me. But it's even worse if you have an ink brush. Seriously, it is much more difficult to get anywhere if you've got one of those. If each side maybe had a ledge that short-range weapon players could jump onto, that'd be a pretty nice fix. At the end of the day, it's still a notably flawed map, but when it does well, it does well enough that I can't have much hate for it. 
I'm sure some people may be feeling just a tiny bit salty about some of the other entries thus far, and in the case of this map, well, you can fill in your own punchlines. Salt Spray Rig is the other map that was around since the test fire, and I personally find it to be the more enjoyable of the two. One thing that sticks out like a sore thumb that I don't have is the contrast going on in the different areas of the map. The top and bottom parts of the stage are pretty much opposites. The top is big and open, with pipes, crates, and a suspended platform. Meanwhile, the bottom section has narrow pathways going across the map, with a small opening isolated at the end. I like this layout for how much of an even playing field it creates. There's plenty of choke points that scope out large chunks of the map, making long-range weapons feel very viable. At the same time, though, there's enough close corners and open space that closing gaps on an enemy isn't too much of a trouble for the shorter range weapons. And that kind of balance is shown further with the spawn points that are completely inaccessible to opposite teams, making the map feel a lot more open and making spawn camping a lot less of an issue. I'll admit time has made me a little tired of this map, but thinking about it objectively, I really can't find much wrong with it. And don't say it's rigged, or I'll gut you like a fishy. <laughs> This next one is pretty much the definition of solid for me. While not really bringing anything unique mechanically, Kelp Dome has a distinct maze-like feel to it. It's very simplistic in its shape, as it's basically just a big square. And it's pretty spacious and has quite a number of pathways to take. Definitely helping it is the graded walkways that run through pretty much the entire map. They add a nice extra level to what would otherwise be an overly simple map. But they're also advantageous in that you can use them to scope out the map a little more, and you can potentially reach the enemy team's spawn with them. With the trade-off being that you're gonna need to drop off of it if you want to use squid form, or if you run out of ink. Otherwise, you're shit out of luck! Now, like with Salt Spray Ray, I can't really say I dislike anything about it, but I'm also not super impressed with anything either. I'm never really in the mood to play on it, but I'm never discontent with it either. It's just a happy medium. I gotta admit, when I first thought to make this list, I was expecting this next map to make it pretty low, seeing as I used to not really like it all that much. And yet... Port Mackerel, to me, is a nice example of pushing the possibilities of a simple idea. Being a shipyard, there are containers scattered throughout the map, and the whole thing takes on sort of a grid layout, with two much more open areas on each side. Design-wise, I think it's good. Weapons with long range can take advantage of the linearity, while short range weapons can utilize the amount of cover and passages. Another thing that jumps out at me is the lack of any real choke points, meaning that the player is going to want to stay on the move quite a lot. I totally get how that might annoy some people, but I see it as a good thing, because this stage is fun to move around in. Part of that is thanks to the two side passages at each spawn that go around the perimeter of the stage. And another part of that is thanks to the moving forklifts on both sides of the map. The forklifts in particular make for nice moving platforms, and are also super good for sprinklers. Most importantly though, I love these elements because they actually let you jump onto the other shipping containers, which for me personally, I have way too much fun with. They're also great for using my favorite sub-weapon, the Squid Beacon. Seriously, it is really easy to be a bastard with these things on this map. I kinda wish this type of platforming could be used even more on this map, but, you know, quit being a bitch, Wombu. Admittedly, it's not really the one that my mind jumps to when I think of really good maps in Splatoon, but I'd be thoroughly damned if I don't have fun with it every time it comes up. Well, this is kinda awkward. When I've already judged certain maps for being too linear or not introducing anything new, it's a little difficult for me to justify sticking Urchin Underpass this high on the list. And yet, of all the really conventional maps in the game, this one resonates with me the most. I think part of that is thanks to its unique squiggly shape, and more important, the fact that it's fucking huge. You've got the large open areas in front of the spawn, the secret passageways, and of course, the large central plaza itself. There's also a lot of little areas that just kind of complete the map more, like the ramps in the center, the walls that can be used for cover off to the side, the ramps that lead up to the spawns, and the little cubbies in the corner of the center plaza. It's a busy map for sure, but none of it feels unnecessary or like a hindrance in any way. I find myself regularly using every part of the stage to some kind of effect. I also like that the stage uses grates in a way that forces you to use squid mode more instead of preventing you from using it. But honestly, that's just kind of a small thing. While yeah, it still isn't super exciting in terms of mechanics, let me put it like this. If Walleye Warehouse is too empty for me, Black Belly Skate Park has too much for me, and maps like Salt Spray Rig, Kelp Dome, and Arowana Mall are just somewhere in between, Urchin Underpass hits the perfect medium. It's an awesome stage. It's at this point in the list that we reach the maps that I really love. It was obscenely hard to pick which ones to rank from here. I had a freaking five-way tie here for a while, but I would sooner gut myself before I even think of sticking five maps in the exact same spot. So I had to break the tie, and taking the number five spot... Mm -hmm. 
When I first played Moray Towers, I was struck right away with its scale and its wacky, wavy layout it's got going here. And to this day, I'd still say the verticality of the whole thing is probably the best part. I really shouldn't have to explain much in terms of the layouts. There are a bunch of zigzagging ramps that build up to the spawn points. Easy enough to understand. But make no mistake, there is quite a lot to work with here. There are a few shortcuts on each of the team's towers, meaning that it's never going to be super obvious where an enemy might be coming from. And going back to the verticality for a second, it is easy peasy to take advantage of. Be it sniping or throwing bombs from above, or jumping off the cliff in order to make a daring escape, this map is prone to dumb shit that has no right to actually work. And I love it for that. I think the positives definitely outweigh the negatives, but if I had to point out a notable issue with it, it definitely favors long-range weapons. While the shortcuts can make a difference, it is very easy for snipers to deal with most players on the map. In that regard, while Moray Towers is really fun, it can also be one of the most frustrating stages ever. No two matches are ever really the same on this one. Hello and welcome all to the number 4 entry. If you look over to your left, you'll find some lovely little paintings. If you look over to your right, you will find some rotating pillars. And if you look towards the center, ink everywhere. <laughs> So theoretically, if you wanted to make a map based around a particular mechanic, you'd probably want it to be something with enough prominence to feel like a necessity, but understandable to the point where it very quickly becomes second nature. Say what you will about Piranha Pit or Ancho V games, in my opinion, Museum de Alfonsino does it right. Honestly, it holds up on a lot of the same merits as the previous entries. The layout is nice and open, with a lot of different levels and passages to take, and the rotating displays complement it really nicely, providing a good point for covering turf while also working as a way to jump to the enemy's side. It's a simple mechanic that provides a lot of possibilities, and that's why I love it. If I had had to nitpick it, I'd say that climbing the center pillar in particular can be a bit of a pain at times, but once again, it's an example of the positives outweighing the extremely minuscule negative. In many ways, Museum de Alfonsino is in itself like a delicate art piece. Multiple repetitive assets, all working in tandem with one another to create an experience evocative of so many different kinds of emotions. It's the perfect canvas for throwing ink all over the place and ruining everything until the management eventually comes and kicks you out of the place and they never let you back in because that was like a $20 million painting that you just fucked up and I think this may have derailed a little bit. What was I saying? Oh yeah, and that is why Mahi Mahi Resort is my number three. Wait. Shit. Alright, alright. So I can definitely appreciate designs that feel like they were very thoroughly thought out, but occasionally, I really enjoy dumb shit. And Mahi Mahi Resort, it's dumb as hell. I love it so much. The vibrant Nickelodeon-esque color and the hotel resort setting definitely matches the feel of the place. But then there's of course the layout. There are long strips of turf on each spawn, but the rest of the map is just a series of disconnected platforms, some of which have gratings and some of which are elevated, and the whole thing is surrounded by water. You're gonna need to do some platforming to get anywhere in this map, which may piss some people off, but I accept it wholeheartedly. And if you aren't particularly fond of the small platforms, the water level does drop halfway through the match, revealing more turf and making the map a little easier to work your way around. Like with the gates and Camp Triggerfish, it makes for a neat little game changer, but I personally find this one way more interesting for how it completely alters the map. Of the maps I've praised in this video, I can see why some people wouldn't quite like this one. It can be pretty overwhelming to play on sometimes, and it becomes quite a clusterfuck pretty often. The way I see it though, Mahi Mahi Resort has a particularly calculated ridiculousness to it that the other maps in the game just don't really have. It's insane, but absolute bliss. <laughs> You know, I'd say the whole map rotation thing is probably one of the best and worst things about Splatoon. It's great for incentivizing players to try different modes and weapons, and it generally keeps things interesting. On the other hand, though, it can sometimes be quite a killjoy if you're sick of particular maps like I am. But for me, there is one map that occasionally makes its way onto the rotation, and whenever it does, everything just feels perfect. <laughs> Okay, so perfect may be a little strong, but I genuinely cannot find a single thing to dislike about Hammerhead Bridge. Maybe one day I'll find something not to like about it, but today is not that day. I complained about linearity with some of the other maps, but I don't really have a problem with it here. There's so many different ways to go about the map that it never feels too straightforward for me. Kind of like with Urchin Underpass, it's nicely balanced and it's not too empty or too busy. And yet, even with all it has going for it, I think what really tips things in favor of Hammerhead Bridge is probably the bridge. 
the graded bridge. See, there's there's a, the whole map is a bridge, but then there's also another bridge going throughout the center. That's the bridge I'm talking about. Don't make a bridgeception joke or I'll fucking bitch slap you. In all seriousness, though, I feel the graded bridge is implemented brilliantly. It runs through the center of the map, so there's always a direct route to the enemy side. It's also extremely advantageous as it pretty much overlooks the entire map and can be used to jump off to different parts that aren't accessible from below. That might sound overpowered to some people, but there are a couple things you gotta remember. For one, the bridge is equally accessible to pretty much all players from many different points on the map. Plus, if you do take it, you make yourself extremely easy to spot, and aside from a few platforms on the bridge, you're pretty vulnerable as well. You're basically throwing out subtlety for a more direct approach, and I love how this goes in contrast with the chasms down below, where you have much more range to move around and be more sneaky. I guess I can't speak for others, but Hammerhead Bridge seems to satisfy pretty much any playstyle. I'm probably in the minority opinion with this one, but I look at it and I see a stage that properly hits every mark of a good Splatoon map. <laughs> So if you haven't guessed at this point, I find one of the big selling points of Splatoon to be the swimming mechanic. I mean, no duh. It's the most unique part of its gameplay. Ever since I first got the game when there was only like four or five maps, I always imagined how this mechanic could be pushed further. So with that said, it should be no surprise that this was the map to ultimately steal number one. Based on the process of elimination, I'm sure you've all known the number one entry for a little while now, and from that introduction, you could probably gather that Flounder Heights was the map that I had wanted to see for the longest time. The first time I played it, I fell in love with it right away. I never wanted to stop playing this map. In terms of the layout, it's honestly kind of simple. Each side has their own open space with a row of buildings dividing them in the center. It's actually one of the bigger maps in the game, but most of its size comes from its height, so it doesn't really feel that way. The big game changer for me though is the walls, which you can actually climb all the way up. It sounds pretty simple, and yet none of the other maps utilize it quite like Flounder Heights does. That being said, it was so good to finally, finally, finally have a map that uses the vertical plane to an actual effect. There is so many different ways to approach every single part of the map, and it is absolutely glorious. If Black Belly Skate Park highlighted the more clumsy aspects of the swimming, Flounder Heights made it feel incredible. To this day, it's easily my favorite map to move around in. Now, in all honesty, I probably could have stuck Hammerhead Bridge at number one, and have been equally content, as I really do like both of the stages equally, but Flounder Heights felt like a more proper number one. It's the map that I always imagined would be perfect for Splatoon, and it met my extremely high expectations. <laughs>